And we see the beheadment. And we see the beheadment of John the Baptist. We see a man that is hung. And the Bible says, Cursed, cursed him that hangeth in a tree. Cursings. And I gotta ask you, do you think so far of what we looked at, do you really think that birthdays are scriptural for Christians to obey and to practice? And we're only on one eighth of my page of five pages. We're going to go through scripture. We're going to go through documented facts. We're going to go through people who have studied this subject of birthdays. And we're going to look at, should a Christian practice birthdays? Now again, there are three places a birthday shows. Genesis 40, Matthew 14, and Mark 6. And the tie into that is Egyptian and Roman. But we'll get into that. Now. Let's take our Bibles to Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah 20. And I'm going to go to Jeremiah 1. And I'm going to lay down a foundation of who is speaking. Who are we reading from? So you know I'm not just pulling it out of a hat. In Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 4, Then the word of the Lord God came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, God is the creator. This is God speaking. I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. So being ordained, being sanctified, being known before he's even born, God has blessed and has called Jeremiah. Would you agree with that statement? Okay, agreeing on that statement, let's run over to chapter 20. And all other things when we come back to, because we'll be back in Jeremiah. Remember Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. This is a man ordained by God, God speaking himself. In Jeremiah 20, we're going to read verse 14 and verse 18. Are you ready? You need a King James Bible. If you don't have a King James Bible, you're going to be in the wrong of this study and everything that has to do with God. Yes, I'm a King James only. Because there's only one word. Everything else in the modern versions are garbage, are Satan, are of the ink of hell and brimstone. Curse be the day wherein I was born. Well, wait a minute. Don't we say, happy birthday? We're going to get into that. But Jeremiah doesn't say, happy birthday. He says, curse be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Blessed means happy. He says, let it not be happy. Jeremiah is complete counter, contra of happy birthday. Wherefore came my forefather womb to see labor and sorrow. Get labor and sorrow. That my day should be consumed with shame. Wow. A man ordained of God says, Curse be his day. Now I'd like you to turn to Job chapter 5 as I go to Job chapter 1. I'm going to read Job and the character of Job so we know who Job is. Job 1.1 1, 1. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. That's great, isn't it? Let's get a better reference. This is adding. 
Verse 8. We got from Jeremiah what God said about him. Now, let's learn about Job. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and upright man. That perfect doesn't mean 100%. means his motives were right. His heart was in the right place. One that feared God and eschewed evil. What would you say about Job? You think we can ask Job and say, Hey Job, can you tell us about birthday? That's a lot better than just getting it from me. Listen, if I threw the garbage, if I threw the Bible in the garbage and just started speaking to myself, I have no value. And I respect you to turn it off and go do something more practical. But I am showing you scripture from God's word by the Holy Spirit. We are testing the waters to see the character of these men. And we see that Job is very respected of God. God had a testimony for Jeremiah and Job. And that's why we're asking them. Are you ready? Job chapter 3. Verse 1. Job 3, verse 1. And after this, open Job, and after this, Job opened his mouth and cursed his day. Let the day perish when I was born. Oh, name that day. And the night in which it was said, There's a man child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above. Neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify, terrify it. As for the night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Now you get verse 6. Let it not be joined unto the days years, months. So every form you fill out, you got to fill out for a birthday, month, day, and year. Job chapter 3, verse 6. What did Job say about his birthday? He completely backed Jeremiah. He doesn't say happy birthday. He curses the day that he was born. Scripture with Scripture. I will give you now all the places in the Bible that says happy birthday. Are you ready? Okay, let's move on. John chapter 3. There's no place in the Bible that says happy birthday. Now there's a problem with birth that why celebrate it? John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So relying on your first birth, you cannot go to heaven. That's a bold statement. <laughs> That's a statement made by God, who is Jesus Christ, and Jesus, that is God, John 10.30. He says, you need to be born again. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? Good question. Can he enter the second time to his mother's womb and be born? No, he can't. That's a logical answer. An honest question. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of water, physical birth, a man's sperm and a woman's egg, that produces life, 
And when a woman comes time to deliver, her water breaks. And therefore comes a child into the world. That is a physical birth. And of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You know how you get saved? What the requirements for you to be saved? First, you got to be born of a woman. Or a test to. If you're a product of a man's seed and a woman's egg. Number two, that birth is wrong. You are born of Adam. You need to be born again by the Spirit of God. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Romans 10, 9 and 10. I was born on September 6, 1968. I was reborn, born again, on April 21st, 1987. From September 6, 1968 to uh, April 20th, 1987, what would have my state would have been if I had died? At what point in my life did I acknowledge sin and still hid from God? There's a problem with your first birth, God, Jesus Christ said in John chapter 3, that you need to do it over to be born again. But yet, when you celebrate a birthday, you celebrate that old birth, don't you not? Let me ask you, would you think God approve of you celebrating a day of your death? Your day being under the father of Satan, John 8, 44. Now, I'm not saying you go out and celebrate the day that you were born again. We'll get into the me, myself, and I of birthdays. But so far, can you see that birthdays are not pretty scriptural? Men are in problems. Jeremiah said sorrow. Let's look at Job chapter 5. Go back and ask Job again. We already established who Job was. What does man have to look forward to when he's born of a woman? In Job 5.7 Yet man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. You know, when you have a campfire, those sparks just go up. Nothing makes those sparks go up. Nothing humanly. They come up all by themselves and they're, they're, they're beautiful. And Eliphaz says, listen, as those sparks that are coming up, they're natural to a fire any fire, so is man that is born into trouble. And God, Jeremiah, I mean, Jeremiah said sorrow, trouble and sorrow. Job 25, verse 4. Would you celebrate something associated with trouble and sorrow? How then can a man be justified with God today by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ only? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Now that's not talking about mud on your elbows or dirty hands before you have dinner. That's a spiritual clean that we saw in John chapter 3. That first birth, you cannot be clean outside the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the shed blood of the innocent blood of the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Outside of that, you will die and burn in hell by your first birth. And the Bible says, born once, die twice. You'll die and be buried, and you'll be resurrected to the great white throne judgment, and then you'll be cast in the lake of fire. That's the second death, Revelation 20. Born twice, be born again, you die once. Okay. 
Another thing, 